<laughs> this is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new value, and a new experience. Welcome to the Geese Spot Podcast. I'm your guide, Katie Silcox, bringing you your weekly self-love sound bites. Join us for conversations around sex, spirit, and all things self-care. All things self-care. All things self-care. This is a journey into You are a G-Spot podcast with Katie Silcox. Hey beauties, welcome to the G-Spot. Today's show is brought to you by our new sponsor. I'm so excited about Banyan Botanicals working with us here at Shakti School. Today we are featuring Banyan's amazing Nasia oil. It is the oil that I use almost every single morning and they are going to give us 15% off on Banyan Botanicals Nasia oil and we're going to give you the link in the show notes. It is full of great herbs and I think you are going to love it, especially in this month of January. We're for many of our listeners, except our Australia and New Zealand gals, (laughs) um, you're going to need it. Things get dry there. So check out Banyan's Nasia Oil. Links are in the show notes. So guys, today, hot topic, Tantra Talks. We're back with one of my favorite things to talk about, which is Tantra, which as many of you know, what we do in Ayurveda school is so much more than just classical Ayurveda. We go very deeply into the spirituality, and I really feel that that's incredibly important. If we only address the physical and we don't really deeply go into these different layers of who we are, we can kind of become a little bit rules-based and miss out on the bigger picture and that eagle-eye vision and the importance of our spiritual walk. And what I love about Tantra is that Tantra really holds in her arms all of the religious traditions. And so you can practice Tantra if you love Jesus. You can practice Tantra if you're a Buddhist. In fact, many Buddhist branches are Tantric in nature. You can practice Tantra if you don't even believe in God and you don't even like that word. There's room for you. And why that is, is that it's so much more than a, it it isn't actually a religious tradition in the sense of religion that we know it. Tantra is a religious tradition in the deepest meaning of that word religion, which is religio, which means, guess what? It means to yoke. Uh, to to bring things together, to to connect. And it's the exact same word as the word yoga, which means to, to join, to yoke. And that was a term from like horsemanship, like when you would yoke a cart to a horse. That thing, that hook that locked them together was called a yuge, which is where we get that root of the word yoga. And it's the same word as religio. It's a a yoking. And you tie yourself to something. And you're bound into something. And what is it that we're linking or we are bound to or we're attempting to reconnect with? And, And that thing is the infinite. That thing is what the native traditions call the great mystery. And I love that word, the great mystery. Those words really get to what it is, right? As soon as you think you know the divine, it shapeshifts. And as soon as you think your life is going, quote, right, you just get smacked in the face with a new experience that challenges everything you've ever known. And what I really want to say about Tantra this morning is that Tantra is that great expansion, that great expansion, but also that great rooting and grounding into the earth. One of my favorite definitions of Tantra is to expand safely. And to stand on my miniature soapbox for a second, just having been in the yoga and spirituality world for so, so long, one of the things that concerns me is this lack of knowledge. Really, I don't think it's coming from a negative place or a bad place. I think it's just a lack of knowledge that not all meditation forms are created equal. 
And um, especially when we're dealing with trauma, um, a lot of meditations can be super ungrounding and not exactly the medicine that people need. The reason is, is that we need to have our feet firmly planted in the world. We need to have an ego before we learn practices that teach us how to merge into the infinite and dissolve the ego into the everything, right? So for myself and for so many of the people that interface with me in our school, um, one of my, one of my shamanic teachers, Cheryl Nietzsche, she says, um, you know, there are really two kinds of people in the world. And right now we're seeing this thread of what the modern world calls narcissism and codependency. And you can use those words, but another way of thinking about it that she really has developed and I find really helpful is, um, you're not so much narcissistic. We all have narcissistic tendencies, right? But there are people who tend to forget the outer world outside of them, that forget the divinity that lives in all, that forget their interconnected web of beingness with all things. They forget that. And so they can be very focused on on their own experience and their own self, and that can make them sort of insular and in the extreme forms, narcissistic. And then there are people who tend to be more on that codependent swing where, um, and another way of saying that, that I find more spiritually awakened that Cheryl has coined is there are people who are just more aware of the outside and the everyone else. And that's a beautiful thing. And it's also a beautiful thing to be very aware of your own self. And there's a security in that. And what we find is that a lot of narcissistic people, they don't tend to get a lot of the issues uh, that we see in co- in codependents who are f- t- attempting really to find that sense of worth, that sense of value, that sense of belonging, that sense of worthiness in the world in and of themselves as them, that sense of deep self-loving, deep self-esteem. So all of these terms that are really in the buzz right now of self-care, self-worth, self-esteem are typically coming from a community of people who maybe hasn't had that capacity to actually orient towards themselves you know, to be selfish in a way, the more I love and care for myself, actually, the, the less selfish I do become. So in the span of Tantra, what I want to say about that is that the meaning to expand, to merge safely is important. If I'm only meditating, uh, especially on inner body sensations or visualizations or expansive qualities or infinite mind, these practices um, may or may not be in service to me if I haven't really deeply located that deep sense of who I am and my self-worth and and learned how to, I mean, just to talk real to you guys, I, I think it's imperative that yoga practitioners and spiritual practitioners and the women and men that I interface with, I think it's imperative that we first learn deep self-love, that we first learn how to connect to our natural environment, that thing called nature, that we have a relationship to the nature in our world, that we first have a strong, loving community of friends and family around us. First things first. And that we're healthy in our body. So all of those factors are required in, 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 in abundance to be able to then go into practices which enable me to expand. I think that, that it could be a bit linear. So Tantra is this practice of expansion from a safe place. So I want to give everyone permission to spend a little bit of time in those in in cre- the creation of community, in the relationship you have to nature and the elements, in your relationship to your physicality, and deeply in the relationship that you have with your own self esteem <clears throat> before you try to merge into the everything. Ironically, the paradox is always present because the more you do those things, the more easy and effortless it becomes to just be in that oneness. Tantra is 
a system that's very beautiful because it's known as the great weaver on the great loom. And what does that mean? It means that Tantra holds the intention of weaving the spiritual experiences of our life into the fabric of everyday life. There's no separation, as we may find in some traditions, especially the more Judeo-Christian ones, which at their essence don't have this, but over time have deleteriously developed a separation between body, soma, and psyche, um, nature, and divinity. In other traditions, Tantra says that, no, we're not separate, our soul, from the world. And the changing, ever di- ever changing dynamic is never separate from that which is changeless, this great mystery, this oneness, this thing that is going by a million different names and simultaneously has no name. Tantra turns this whole idea of God as something separate from us on its head. Right, The changeless and the changing are in constant communication, interfacing with one another. And I can carry spiritual awareness and spiritual vibrancy and all of this awakeness into my everyday life and, and knowing that it's going to change. And this, my beloveds, is how we can begin to celebrate life. A story comes to mind uh, from um, Richard Rohr. And he's talking about, there was actually a woman on his, on his podcast speaking about how she was a new mother and she had two very young children, one child and a baby. And you could tell this woman was very bright and very, um, spirit minded. And she said that she, she really like wanted to hold this intention of continuing to do her, her meditation and her contemplation in the mornings, even though she had these young babies. And so she said it was weird. It was almost like, um, one, one thing that I've been looking at and working with lately is this idea of synchronicity, right? And so she said it was, it was this sort of synchronicity that you don't want, right? We all love the synchronicities that feel good, but what about the synchronicities that annoy us? And she said it would be like a joke, a cosmic joke, because every time she would just get in that meditation seat, the baby would start crying, as if the baby had a sixth sense, right? Like, oh, mommy's meditating. And um, she she brought this, you know, trouble, this frustration that she was having to her teacher. And he said, oh, you know, how wonderful. It is as if the spirit of Christ, right? This is what the, the Christian tradition calls this holy mother, right? The holy prana shakti, this holy love, right? The spirit of Christ. It's as if it knows that you're about to enter into meditation where you'll have this warm, loving gaze of the mother. And that spirit of Christ in the child can't can't bear not to be witnessed by your love. And she wakes up. And oh my goodness, I just got covered in chills. The thing that we think is our interrupter is the thing that is longing for our love gaze in this world, right? And so mothers listening out there, those frustrations you guys have, you know, like our our children are our spiritual practice. And in the tantric tradition, that is one of the highest, if not the single highest uh, incarnative experiences for a spiritual practitioner is to be the mother. So remember that, that you're, you're a Maha Yogini. You're a big, big time, big time practitioner out there, you mamas. And so it completely changed her relationship to meditation. This very tantric idea of no separation between the flesh, the messy baby with its diaper and its cries, the drooling puppy dog, right? For me lately, it's been contractors coming in and out of my house. And I've just really tried to like hold them as brothers and, and they feel it, right? They, I also get annoyed with them like a sister does with her brother, but we have a relationship and there's a sweetness in that rather than seeing these things as separate. Oh, if I could just get rid of these crying babies for a minute or these contractors. And sometimes we need that, right? Don't get 
it twisted. <laughs> Sometimes we need that. But to be able to see these divine sparks and all is a is a mark that you are advancing on your path. So in this we can celebrate our life. Both the spiritual and the mundane are celebra- are a celebration. And t- Tantra it really has existed in, in so many cultures. And it's all about removing that veil that separates the worldly from the spiritual. I think about native traditions from everywhere, the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Vedic traditions from India, the Peruvians, the Chinese, the Taoists, the Tibetans, and the beautiful Celtic tantric practices from Europe. And I know there are more, but what we are seeing is this beautiful multiculturalism tying us all together. This is the deepest meaning of the word yoga, um, to weave, right? Now, to do this weaving, to do this work of weaving our spirituality with the worldly, we need something. We need something. And that thing we need is called shakti. It's called power. We need divinity. We need grace. We need the power of the divine. We need the power of the divine moving through us. And we need our personal willpower, right? So these are, it's not that you just lay back and eat donuts and watch the world and say it's all God, right? Uh, We can't do that because um, we have this thing called karma or limitations. And so we need a certain amount of power and that's where Ayurveda comes in and that's where what we've created here called Ayurveda school, that's what it's all about. It's about how can I, as a human being, make 2020 the most beautiful, powerful, dreamy year possible so that I can advance into this goal where every day can be this great mystery unfolding, this synchronistic, serendipitous love affair where I can see God in the baby diapers and the contractors and the job loss and, you know, the the death and the divorce and the sickness because my sisters, it's gonna happen. How can I keep my body vessel strong? How can I keep my body vessel clear? How can I keep these 72,000 rivers of prana free to let that life force flow? That is what Ayurveda is. And what is Tantra's method? Tantra says we use whatever works. (laughs) Whatever it is that helps you to move out of your limitations. I I went to this beautiful two day writing workshop in the in the in the in the nature here in Virginia. It was my my uh, nature club, my nature group, the Living Earth School, and we just sat around and 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 we were you know prompted with these really beautiful, very tantric inquiries about what we wanted this year to be about and um. One of my mentors, his name is Hub, Hub Not, the wily, beautiful, mischievous Hub. He said, there are these things called push goals. And a push goal is if there was one thing that you could do to shift your life, it, it, would, it would be the kind of thing that would make every other goal in your life either happen or or make them a lot easier and so tantra says the same thing we have these limitations and we need a certain amount of life force enable to to enable us to move beyond these limitations because here's the thing our limitations have their reasons there's a reason we do the weird addictive things that we do distractive things that we do self-harming things that we do you guys there's a reason we do them and you know think about your gut microbiome i was speaking with my friend valerie who's a nurse over at uva and we were and we were talking about how your gut microbiome has desire that is not the desire of your head and your heart <laughs> it has its own desire and those microbial organisms crave the foods that you've been feeding them so if you've been feeding them sugar 
and you've been feeding them processed junk, wheat, whatever, you know, kale, whatever it is that you've been feeding them, the gut will has created that environment that's going to ask for and desire more of that. And that may not be what your heart longs for. So just on the physical level, there are operatives inside of you that may be against your love field, highest mother power force. And that's kind of freaky, but also really cool to feel like I'm not alone. I am a, I am a microcosm of teeny tiny universes that are, they're sometimes at war and sometimes in peace. So sometimes we have to push through and say to that microbiome, yo, sorry, this is going to be uncomfortable, but that's not what we're doing anymore. So Tantra, in this sense, is whatever helps me move beyond those limitations. Our elders saw that we could live in harmony with nature and be really, really supported in our spiritual goals. They saw our body as this altar. And so just as we move into 2020, thinking about your body as an altar, what if you were going to do worship in your body? as an altar how would that change the way that we treated our body so my beloveds there's so much more I've got like six more pages I'm not going to get to them good thing we have a podcast and we can keep going next month with our tantra talks but what I want to say before we close is a couple of things we've still got some spots left in Ayurveda school it's filling up fast you guys it starts January 15th that's coming up hot I hope that you will join us where we will go into Ayurveda, working with Agni Vidya, the science of fire, herbology, astrology, the chakras, alchemy, spiritual alchemy, visualization, body yantra, where we go into the bone structure and realign these sacred physical yantras of the body, kundalini, Vastu, Ayurveda for men, Ayurveda for children, so much more, even too much to list. That's why we need a whole year. Actually, we have a two-year program. So I hope you'll join us. Now's the time after January 15th. We don't do it again for another year. So I hope you will join us. And I want to close with a note from our sponsor. We love them. It's a Haragi. We have a beautiful link for their ghee in the show notes. You guys know this is the only ghee that I'm using right now. It is the best ghee on the planet, made in the traditional way from A2 cows that are so much loved and sustainably, lovingly, ethically made. So check out Ahara Ghee. We've got a special link where you guys get a special discount with Ahara Ghee just for using our link. So check that out. I know you guys are loving that ghee because we get your emails. I know. That's why we just keep loving that they want to be our sponsor because it really is really is special to have really um, powerful products that make the world a better place. So check that out. And I hope to see you guys soon in the classroom. Much love. Kote phula pun sukhe, kote phula.